may not think about your kickstand when needing lube, but those get kind of rusty and grind. Okay, this is gonna be scrap yard action. I'm gonna actually scrap some of this stuff out. Uh, YouTube, you kind of say, I'm gonna scrap this out. Typically in the scrap world, you would say, I'm gonna clean this. I'm gonna clean the brass from the aluminum. I'm gonna clean, clean this up, get the electric motor out. I'm gonna clean this up, get that brass tube out. That was already cracked, so I know there's brass in there. Sometimes you go after these, and it's just a piece of low-grade stainless. It's magnetic. It's not really all that worth it, but uh, when you, if you want to get that brass, that brass dollar seventy pounds. So I'm gonna go after that. Let me just uh, stop yapping and get to it. Three super common, super popular tools in the scrap world. I'm doing this light, 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 uh, light work scrap snips actually you know what i need to, i need to lube those i need to probably lube a lot of these tools snips hammer both screwdrivers i don't need the flat one for this but pieces of scrap floating around everywhere other tools you might need since i started selling tools you know come in handy pair of pliers of course Got a pair of vice grips in there. I got a nice little utility tool I can use as a backup for basically every tool I have. <laughs> um, a little pair of needle nose, a pair of channel locks in there. Uh, there's a nut. Usually I carry a nut driver. I'm not sure if I got a nut driver in there, but I kind of got away from carrying a nut driver. Nut drivers come in good for uh, taking the motors off the bottom of uh, dishwashers. That kind of stuff, they're usually locked on there with nuts. Uh, screwdrivers, that's about it. I got a bottle of, bottle of slime in there, that green bottles, bottle of slime. So if I puncture a tire, I can fill it up with slime. The slime is great for anyone interested. Oh, it came off, I was too busy lubing that kickstand. I need to go get my, my work gloves. Those fingerless gloves that work. For those of you who have never worn fingerless gloves, it's amazing. It's amazing how protection, how much protection they actually offer. My skin is actually real fragile. <laughs> it's uh, doesn't feel good working without my gloves. So uh, that's a nice piece of brass right there. That's real brass. It's good. I gotta take these nuts off. sweat <laughs> see I, look at that my hands can't handle that see that just a little bit of work my hands are breaking down <laughs> um if you never tried fingerless gloves i highly suggest it the reason i wear them is because they basically offer all the protection of a normal glove once you learn not to stab your fingers down into stuff pokey things um you'll probably take some nicks and gouges before you get the hang of it but those gloves offer so much protection and then it allows you to uh do the tedious little things that take dexterity that's the main reason i can't stand being without my dexterity you know what i mean 
like if you're wearing full finger gloves. Now, some, some people might just be used to it or not mind it, but I just can't stand. I can't stand not being able to just grab this little screw like that, you know, <laughs> not being able to pick that up precisely, you know, not having full, full precision. So there, there's that, look at that big piece of brass in there. That's the brass. Generally, these casings are gonna be a cast aluminum. So most scrap guards will probably make you take these off. It's not that big of a deal. See the corrosion on that screw you will constantly run into screws that are frozen and whatnot these bolts will be frozen in there see that rust it's actually that little bottle of lube i had you might want to squirt a little lube down in there and just let it sit for a minute and this should come out pretty easily grab them with your like channel locks or flyers Some scrapyards might be so picky, they require you to get that little bit of plastic out of there. Sometimes there'll be like a stainless steel screen in there. Now they might even, if you don't chop that little bit of copper off there, they might even try to give you dirty brass. So it just depends. The scrapyard I'm going to has no problem with just giving me clean brass for that piece right there the way it is. Actually, I could probably take this whole, whole uh, they probably just give me clean brass for that. See all the junk that's on there. Most of yards probably won't. I should have said this at the start of the video. If you don't have time to do all this stuff, you can just take this whole mess of metal in, and your scrapyard will be more than happy. Just take it all at once and give you like five or ten cents a pound for it. <laughs> they might sort it out a little. You know, it's not really their job to sort it out. But you know, if you don't have time, you can just leave the radiator the way it was, and that'd be like ten cents a pound. You could just leave a fan the way it is, and that'd be like five or six cents a pound. You'd take the electric motor out. Electric motor is 25 cents a pound now. And uh, like the circuit board, I made a video. I, this was in a video a while back. I was saying, I was saying these transformers are up to 25 cents a pound and stuff. You can take those off. But don't be fooled. You can just take this whole thing like this and just throw it in your tin pile. You, most scrapyards aren't gonna care. And you just throw that in your tin pile. You know, what I'm trying, the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to do this work. You don't have to do this, all right? You don't have to take these off. If you don't want to, a lot of people just simply don't really have the time to do this kind of stuff. Or a lot of people don't like doing this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So, pretty easy stuff. So, uh, most of those pieces of metal there are tin. Lots of times they'll be aluminum. Let's see if they're not just burned. That circuit board looks like it's been burned. It's just tin. So if there's aluminum, you might go after those. These little cylinders have aluminum. If you want to clean those up. But I'm just gonna throw a whole thing in my in my tin pile when I get to the scrapyard. And uh nice little motors here. So these little transformers. They're gonna go in the same category as this electric motor. 25 cents a pound. Prices start getting higher, of course. The more sense it makes to start actually cleaning this stuff up a little. I'm not, you know, these motors were down to like, I think seven cents a pound, you know? <laughs> when 10 was at like three cents a pound. 
So you gain four cents by taking this out of here. Uh, maybe eight cents, I suppose, by taking this out of here. So, you know, I mean, do you want to spend the time making eight cents? So you just want to throw the whole thing in your tin shed pile. But now that tin is at five cents and electric motors are at 25 cents, well, shoot, now that's a, that's a 50 cent motor now. You know what I'm saying? It's not a 14 cent or 16 cent or 18 cent or 20 cent motor now. It's a 50 cent motor now. If it weighs two pounds, you'll see what I'm saying. So uh, it starts to make more sense. Most scrap metal wherever you live should be up a little bit at a minimum. So uh, that's when it starts to make more sense to do this kind of stuff. If you do start cleaning stuff up, you will want to have a garbage can around for all this massive amount of plastic. And then uh, these motors that come out of these fans, lots of the variety that come out of all sorts of fans will have these aluminum cases. So you can continue to scrap down. So that this motor is 25 cents a pound. That aluminum will be 35 cents a pound. So, you know, it might be a quarter pound of aluminum there. So I'm not gonna gain a whole lot, see what I'm saying? The aluminum, taking that aluminum off, motor stays at 25 cents a pound. That little bit of aluminum I can throw in with my aluminum, which will go 35 cents a pound. If I only weighs a quarter pound, I'm only gaining $2, uh, 2 2.5 cents, see what I'm saying? But I'll strip that down here just to show it to you. There it is right there. There's actually a little piece of metal in there. It needs to come out. See how the magnet's sticking to it. But uh, that's how that goes. And uh, so it's, it's real lightweight stuff. So when the motors are at 25 cents a pound, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do that. Uh, I, mean, I suppose if you were going to go after that copper right there, you can continually, a lot of this stuff, just keep stripping it down. I could just keep on going after that copper. But then I get that copper out of there, which is going to be like three dollars a pound or so but then all this steel goes from 25 cents a pound down to i think steel sort steel let's just call it 10 we'll go down to five cents a pound because that's technically that's plated There's, those are plates but uh so a lot of people don't quite get that idea you know, that's that's 25 cents a pound as is see that that heavy steel heavy tin 25 cents a pound for the whole thing take that copper out and that's that's wonderful the copper is three dollars a pound so you will gain some money but that the heavy 
most of the weight there is that tin steel so that you know you're only getting uh one fifth the amount of money now for the steel so you know you want 25 cents for that steel or you want five cents for that steel see what i'm saying so it's not it's not always as great as a lot of people think it is uh when i first came to youtube i saw a lot of videos claiming you know massive amounts of money for cleaning copper out of stuff but they, they never they never ever take into account the weight of like the insulation on the copper wires they never take into account your uh 80 percent loss on your on your price of steel that that, that, that actually <laughs> that's not a factor you can't forget about but uh anyways i'm just gonna leave it like that right there you, you can make more money but don't don't forget to add up your losses you know don't forget up to add, don't forget up especially if you're making videos and telling people they can make this amount of money don't forget about your 80 percent loss when you take that copper off that steel that steel's worth five cents a pound now yeah, well six cents seven cents whatever it is you know, you know what i'm saying but uh, i'm not going to show you that again uh, i should just pull out of there like so so uh, there's a piece of steel right there even, even with even with aluminum breakage you know i already got 10 cents a pound for that and that aluminum hardly weighs anything you know what i'm saying I took that aluminum off now i get five cents a pound for that i just lost half my money for that right there you know what i'm saying if safe that weighs a pound that was going to be worth 10 cents but now i took it out now it's worth five cents see what i'm saying and this this isn't even enough to weigh on the scrapyard scale you know that i could throw that in with my aluminum pile and it's irrelevant so you know what i'm saying i, I technically i probably just lost a nickel by cleaning that up there <laughs> you know what i'm saying so uh Anyways, don't forget about that kind of stuff if you're new to the subject. Even I think a lot of people that have been in for a while don't quite realize sometimes that uh, they might be doing a lot of work. They really don't have to or, or work they shouldn't even be doing, you know. If you're doing a bunch of work where you're only gaining tiny amounts of money for tons of amount of work, you know, maybe maybe, uh, maybe your, your, your labor time is better off you know you're better off trying to do something else you know uh those oxygen machines i've been meaning to get to those are worth cleaning out um but anyways i think you get the picture time time lots of people don't think about time there is no more valuable commodity than time no matter no matter who you are and no matter what you do there's nothing more <laughs> more valuable than time so how do you want to spend your time and when it comes to working you know you spend your time do you want to make you want to make 15 dollars an hour spending your time or do you want to make 20 hours an hour spending your time or do you want to make you want to make seven or six dollars an hour spending your time and a lot of this real tedious scrap that's that's what a lot of people are doing and they may not realize it but sometimes tedious scrap is worth it uh the more you do it the more you realize it but uh, anyways let's uh, get down to the scrap yard oh uh i may have misspoke some scrap yards might not let you throw circuit boards in your tin but i don't want to give out bad information i have heard that some mills don't want to run those chewy little uh, circuit boards through their shredder i think sometimes they might get up there and foul you know in the crevices and kind of foul up the the shredder arm a little bit uh, or make it more inefficient kind, kind of like this theory of, of my my squeaky my sticky rusty little kickstand how it needs some lube so some scrapyards might not want to do this i, I think this one burned up I noticed that metal has kind of a burn color to it. See that? Kind of that brown, rusty look to it. And uh, see that there? I don't know if that's like water stains that have rusted out the metal over time. That might be what it is. But uh, see that? It looks like it was on fire. See them? See the markings in there? It looks like it got hot. 
Anyways. Warning, once you try fingerless gloves, you may never go back. Warning. <laughs> um, can you tell how much I've used these? These are the best gloves I've ever found. There might be something better out there. Harbinger or Harbinger, uh, however that's supposed to be pronounced. These are technically weight lifting gloves. So at a sports gear store, you can find something like that. They've got extra padding, so that would be like for your barbells and your, your weight bars and stuff. There's extra padding in the palms and on the fingers and basically everywhere. There's just just weightlifting gloves in general are probably what you will want. They hold up for a long time. I wore out probably a couple dozen pair of gloves, wore the fingers out of them, and, and uh, by the time I realized, well, I'll just start cutting the, the tips off my my normal gloves and uh not not like a real strong pair of work gloves i never it take a long time to wear the fingers off those but just like standard gloves um so i started cutting the fingers off and then finally i was like well you know what i like this fingerless stuff and uh, i just slowly learned and uh, i'll never go back i will never go back to wearing full finger gloves unless i'm working with like dangerous dangerous chemicals or something you know but anyways warning <laughs> they might look stupid but if you ever try them you, if you're like a gardener or whatever kind of work you do if you try fingerless gloves you may never go back one thing i can tell right off the bat is when you wear fingerless gloves you don't have to keep taking your gloves on and off so lots of times when you wear a nice a nice thick work glove you need to go down and, and do something that takes dexterity what do you do you take your gloves off and you end up working without gloves so <laughs> like i say if you try them you might never go back before i go the links to these are down in the description this exact pair this exact brand and to other weight gloves on amazon and ebay if you want to just quick link to them and check them out you should be able to get them for a pretty decent price ship them right to your door uh, if you use my link, I'll get a small commission. So, uh, so when I know an item is just wonderful, that, that, that in my opinion, that I think is wonderful, I don't have a problem with putting that link down there and saying, hey man, check out that link. You can find a link to that slime down there too. I got fuel bottles underneath my seat. You can find a link to the fuel bottles down there too. If you do a two wheeler like this, I'm sure there's probably some people out there that might've copied this. A load like that is kind of dangerous on a real windy day. So it doesn't look windy here, but out on the open highway, and it feels like about 30 mile an hour gusts or more. And uh, it's got a sailboat effect to it. So I got, got the bungee here for extra, extra support. And then I hold on here if I have to on the other side. <laughs> but uh, it wants to blow the whole thing back. And uh, it might be kind of dangerous. So I diverted out of the wind under these side roads as I go down to the scrapyard and I came by here I haven't been by here in a while look at this looks like someone dumped that's someone's private property up in there I'm sure they're not happy with this but I looked and uh, that's a dishwasher right there I dumped a whole bunch of junk over here look at it this might have been someone was unhappy with whoever owns this land I don't know. Or this this is probably just a midnight dump. This is probably just somebody that doesn't care about nothing. Just doesn't care about problems that cause other people. But I'm gonna have this. Um so this is a little different model of dishwasher here. Um oh shoot. This one's built a little differently. I talked about dishwashers. And is this actually a refrigerator? You know what? That's a refrigerator. That's a weird it's a weird refrigerator. That's a look at that. <laughs> That's a little refrigerator you can roll around. I think it's a refrigerator. It's a weird looking deal. So that that little cord right there I just snipped off there with today's price. This is about 75. I think it's a refrigerator freezer. So in here, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a refrigerator. I think it might be a freezer as well. 
Uh, might just be a freezer. It's kind of weird looking. There's a nice, uh, there's a heavy duty compressor and some copper lines and stuff. Uh, if you needed the money. You can take off I think, one screw, two screws, these four screws and the whole thing will lift out of there. You have to cut these two lines over here. Technically that's illegal and you can get fined because uh, there's some, some kind of refrigerant gases in there. But those generally aren't too bad when you cut the lines they usually kind of just go Psh! It's the air conditioners that are, that are horrendous. But uh... Huh. I, you don't see too many uh, little freezer refrigerator units that have wheels on the bottom. It's throwing me off. I couldn't really picture it when I first saw it. You know, you see them dishwashers, them portable dishwashers that roll around people's kitchens. You don't see a whole lot of freezer refrigerators with wheels. This isn't Johnson. That's that mill that has that loud fan. If, any, if anyone's local, if you want to live around here, that little freezer is actually a nice piece of scrap. I just want to take it all on all one shot. So there are some issues around scrap. Where you will be dealing with hazardous materials. You know, it's, it's kind of a bummer. The problem with air conditioners and refrigerators and CRT TV, glass tube TVs, the problem is that they were ever manufactured like that to begin with, you know. scrapyard getting it sorted out for you I want to show you a couple things real quick lots of times when you take this piece off these faucets lots of times it's brass but look at this that one's like a low-grade stainless steel so uh, some scrapyards might if you throw this kind of stuff in with your brass you know like that if they hit it with a magnet some scrapyards you gotta watch out they're liable just to give you a tin shred like five cents a pound for your whole thing of brass so you really want to uh check and see how your scrapyards do stuff if you have a stickler scrapyard that could really cost you a lot of money both those faucets were like that and then i found this uh this padlock and i think almost every single padlock i find that's that color is brass but look at this one I, I saw a little bit of rust on it and uh, brass doesn't rust so I hit it with a magnet look at it <laughs> that's a steel padlock that they have they have painted to look like brass that's pretty lame so like I say if you had if you had those two pieces in your brass and someone in the scrapyard was you know they're busy working you know they hit that with a magnet and that's magnetic they hit that with a magnet that's that, that's magnetic they might give you five you know the price of ten for your whole load of brass so you want to you want to be careful and sometimes people will try to scam scrapyards and and they don't want to deal with that kind of stuff so uh make sure you know how your scrapyards do stuff and another thing i was talking about this scrapyard doesn't take lead so that's out like that if you're wondering another thing i was talking about you constantly will run, will run into frozen screws and frozen bolts and uh sometimes If you just give them a give them a whack or if you turn them in the direction where you tighten them a little hard and then back but sometimes if they're frozen particularly with these faucets and the stuff where it's been rusted and corroded sometimes if you just kind of whack it like that you can knock them loose you, you don't want to make you don't want to uh, bend anything you, know, you don't want to hit it super hard see all that corrosion on there 
that was frozen in there and i just sat there and kind of lightly tapped it like that for a while kind of went back and forth with it and slowly started moving but uh, that's that's one thing you run into a lot if you start cleaning this stuff up and I also this scrap yard has a tendency to call this white brass the legend the mythical white brass so uh, i think i think what what white brass is is it is it's a brass with uh, zinc in it so i think how they make brass now you might, might want to google this and check it out i think what they do is they take copper and they mix it with uh, zinc and i think that's how to get brass and uh, i think when they take copper like a brass with zinc i think when i use a ton of zinc copper with like probably 80 percent zinc or whatever it is maybe if, you can Google it, see what the exact percentage is. But some scrapyards might call that white brass. And it might, it might go in here. Some scrapyards might call it cast aluminum. I, I know I've called it cast aluminum in the past. And that's because there's a scrapyard that calls this cast aluminum. And uh, this scrapyard calls it white brass sometimes. And I always kind of thought they were wrong. But uh, that's, this is way too heavy. It's way too heavy and, and way too strong to be just a, a cast aluminum. See, I hit it right there with my, with my snips, see that? To make sure it wasn't a, a real yellow brass. But anyways, I thought that's kind of interesting. I, I don't know if it's gonna go in my aluminum bucket. It's aluminum, or in my brass bucket, it's brass. Some scrapyards might call it zinc or something, but uh, check it out. I think I'm gonna get brass for that. I'll let you know after I get it finished up. And uh, I got my electric motors in here with my brass carry up the scale i got a little bit of copper here not really enough to weigh i might just bring that back another day tin shred here a hydraulic thing old, old bush heads clipper tin cans some some scrapyards might have a separate category for tin cans uh, chain that fingernail clippers anything made out of tin steel Got the steel steel rim. Steel's a little more valuable than tin. So uh, technically I could take like this bolt out and that would go as short steel. But I mean it's not really that big of a difference in that tiny amount. Uh, actually that would be like a short steel as well. Uh, I got this aluminum. That's like a window, a window screen frame. A uh, little baking pan down there. So I'm gonna take that off the motor. Electrical conduit. Sometimes those will be made out of a steel. So you wanna hit those with a magnet. That one's aluminum. Aluminum cans, I don't need to explain those. This is extruded aluminum. This is the frame off of a shower. A sliding glass shower door frame. See those are the tracks where the door slides. That's like the plate out of like of a doorway. I think uh, flooring, aluminum flooring, dealy, dealy, whatever you call it, thingamajiggy. This is communications wire. I'll show you what I get for this. This is like ethernet. On this stuff, you don't have to take these plugs off at the scrapyard. See that gold plate? Uh, let's see how much that's worth. Stainless steel, old, uh, old cup. These are actually pretty nice little mixing bowls. I would save them for pet dishes, but I can't I can't put any pet dishes in there, just spill over. So scrap your ideas. That's a good high grade stainless, non-magnetic. This is an aluminum pan. It's got a steel handle. I'm gonna see what they wanna do with that. They might call it aluminum. It might go here. It might be aluminum breakage. See what they wanna do with that. And this is gonna go as a clean aluminum auto radiator. That'll be probably the same price as this aluminum. And here I've got some number one insulated copper wire mixed in with my number two insulated copper wire. It's, it's two different categories. I don't have enough of one to weigh. Together they weigh a pound, so I'll probably just get number two for all that. It's not that big of a deal on a small amount. Just a piece of tin shred here, go here. And uh, I think that's all. What I miss, anything? I'll check it out that's it i think this is going to be more than a number two insulated and less than a number one insulated so 
some scrapyards might be totally different. This used to be called considered a junk wire. <laughs> used to be considered like a low grade junk wire. Now it's considered a, a higher grade than number two insulated. So different scrapyards are likely to do different things with that. You wanna check it out. See how we do it here. Let me get out of the sun so you can see what's going on. Got a 28 pound short steel, nine cents a pound. Look at that, all the way to nine cents a pound, $2.52. Two pounds electric motors, 25 cents, total of 50 cents. Five pounds brass, $1.70 a pound for $8.50. Got uh, three pounds clean aluminum pans, 50 cents a pound for $1.50. That aluminum clean car radiator, five pounds, 35 cents a pound for $1.75. Three pounds clean aluminum. They counted that pot with the steel handle as clean aluminum. The scrapyard is fairly liberal in that regards. Three pounds clean aluminum, 35 cents a pound for $1.05. So you can see the radiator and clean aluminum are different categories, but same price at the moment. We've got that extruded aluminum, that shower frame and that floor, whatever kind of floorboard that was. Six pounds, 60 cents, $3.60. That Cat 5 cable, that pink stiff, the communications wire I was talking about, is uh, 90 cents a pound for $5.40. So uh, I think that's actually lower than number two. Let's find out here. Stainless steel, three pounds, 40 cents a pound on stainless, dollar 20. Number two, insulated copper wire, dollar 10 a pound for 220. So I was giving out bad information there. The Cat 5 is now below number two, but uh, $1.10 for number two insulated copper wire is just wonderful. And uh, 90 cents a pound on Cat 5. So I'll keep that in mind for future reference. Uh, it's just a touch below number two. The junk wire, insulated junk wire, copper wire is 50 cents a pound. So the category five is 90 cents a pound. Number two is $1.10 a pound. I think number one is like $1.50 a pound or something. 12 pounds, 10. Five cents a pound, 60 cents total. Total of 28.82. Let's go over here and see if they got their number one copper insulated. Let's do, give out the right, give out good information. What do you think? Uh, $1.65 for their number one insulated copper wire. Yeah, Steve? West. Go. ten for number 50. Yeah, because like uh, on the, on the, number two uh, insulated copper wire. The board, we're paying about 165. Their low grade junk wire is up to 60 cents a pound. So uh, that category five will be right in here. 90 cents a pound right there. Not a bad little run, $28. Uh, basically just a load of garbage, what do you think? I hope you enjoyed this little show. I hope uh, somebody out there learned at least just a little something something. Make a little extra money. As always, thanks for watching.